Well, hello, everybody. I think it's seven. I'll give it a minute or two. Uh, talk about a few things. I hope everybody feels like they have set up. And, um, and if you haven't and you're just drinking wine and watching, that's great, too. Uh, I hope you're having a good uh, evening. Um, and you got the images from Melissa um, over from Arts Council. She has sent you two photographs via email, just in case you're not aware. Um, I can't, I'm not quite there yet with my tech um, abilities to pull up that image, uh, but I will get better and better at this. Uh, but that photograph has been sent to you in email. I have it up on my screen here so I can look at it. And, uh, oh, and they're also posted on Eventbrite. Awesome. So Melissa's got you covered. Um, if you download the images, sometimes it's easier. Or if you want to have it on your phone or a separate device uh, from the Zoom chat, uh, Zoom video, uh, that might be helpful. Um, what else? It's nice to see you. i not exactly seeing everybody, but nice to have everybody here. Um, here, some of the things that I've got going on. I've got my jars of water. They're already a little dilute, but I have a couple of clean jars in the back. And um, this is my palette. Right. And since this is getting recorded, guys, um, the nice thing is that you can go back and look at some of this. And, um, you know, if you have questions, even then we can always there could always be um, some email back and forth. Um, my usual palette is this crazy. Um, crazy big guy here. So he actually becomes huge. He's so huge. Look at, my, look at the size of my face. So he's pretty big. Um, I like. I like a good sturdy plastic palette when I'm um, out and about, but the first one I showed you is ceramic um, or porcelain, porcelain. And um, you could use, I have students who use um, the old, uh, like you get these porcelain um, trays, really shallow lip, shallow depth uh, with a lip. You get them at uh, thrift stores, they're awesome. And today I'm using, uh, maybe you guys can see it, there we go. It's uh, size 12, long, round, and pointed, as you can make out from the way it looks. <laughs> and it's just a Princeton Aqua Elite brush. Um, so in my classes, I often talk about all the different kinds of brushes and whatnot. But as my students know, um, I'm often painting with this one. It just somehow seems to respond to everything I want to do. And between this and this beautiful mop, which is the Da Vinci Casaneo. Um, I'm pretty much covered most of the times. Uh, but watercolor is all about um, using different kinds of brushes for sure, depending on how you want to use it. So uh, yeah, so one could use all kinds of brushes. Anyways, I want to show you my paint. Um, so we have Payne's Gray, and it's this guy here. Hopefully everybody can see it. Um, if you keep text, um, chat, you know, putting messages in the chat box, I can, I can quickly see. And if there's something I'm not covering or if I'm not clear or something goes amiss, please um, let me know. Um, and this is Conacridone Gold. So Conacridone Gold uh, makes a lovely golden yellow, something like that. I know the colors on the screen may or may not be perfect. Um, I have some pretty decent lighting, but I think I may have to get actually even more lighting. So my next class, which is next, um, our next free class uh, is the second Tuesday of November and then the second Tuesday of December. And hopefully I'll be improving every single time. <laughs> um, this is green gold, Daniel Smith green gold. Uh, this was also a, a Daniel Smith quinacridone gold. Um, I'm just pointing out that these are some of the colors I'm using. Bismuth uh, Bandit yellow, which is an amazing strange opaque kind of yellow almost uh some nicolazzo but you know we're all here to just have some fun with this tonight i'd like to one maybe some of you are just painting because it's fun to try something that the arts council offers and it's such an amazing place to just you know just try something new everything from print to whatever media you want um so we don't have to get too serious about this is my point you could use as simple like as cadmium yellow lemon yellow so if you look at the image the the tree that i'm going to be doing which is this drawing here i hope you guys can kind of see the pencil lines uh it's a little tricky 
but the pencil lines are there and it's only the major branches that I have drawn. Um, I'm not drawn in the sky bits or the leaves, okay? Um, I hope people can um, uh, just draw uh, the branches. You don't have to, but it would be helpful, I think. Draw the branches very lightly, yeah? And, um, and that should be all you need for this image. So I wanted to use some simple colors like um, you can use lemon yellow, cadmium yellow. You might need a bit of ochre. Um, I'm planning to use some of this lovely um, QOR, which is a lovely brand. Um, they have some uh, raw umber here that I'm going to be using. Uh, I'm not affiliated with any of these brands. I'm just saying, you know, like this is what I'm doing. Um, what else? Oh, the blue, the most important part, that lovely shiny blue sky coming through. I'm using Quar Thalo Blue. Um, I do have a Daniel Smith um, Thalo Blue that I use as well. I generally stick with Daniel Smith, but, um, uh, but this is a beautiful blue. So this is this blue right here. I was testing some blues out earlier. Um, I often, so this is my movable, you know, the, the piece of paper I'm working with. Um, this paper is um, definitely, 140 uh, GSM, uh, but also not my usual, which is Arches. I think this was a sample pack I got from um, uh, another company, basically, but very close to Arches. So it's good stuff. And then I have this incredible paper um, that I'd like to just speak about for a second, uh, made by this company, Pune Handmade Papers. It's a gift from my friend in India who manages this amazing institute. Um, and, uh, anyways, so it's completely handmade paper and it's quite gorgeous. So I'm going to be playing with this as well in between. Oh yeah. And that's the second image you all saw. So the second image was just for me to do something while I wait for the tree painting to dry, because I possibly will need something as a filler. And, um, you may or may not follow along on this one, but you, you know, might enjoy watching how paint moves on handmade paper. Yeah. Handmade paper, uh, with hundred percent cotton, it's quite different from the kinds that Arch uh, produces or, and it's apparently Arch, not Arches, like I've always said, but Arch. And um, you can use, uh, it, it has a sizing on top. So it's very different from 100% cotton handmade paper. Um, so that's the difference. Let's see what else. So we've drawn the branches. I am going to start jumping in. It's 710 almost. I think it's all right to start. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead with my phthalo blue. And just to give you a sense of how I mix my colors. So I wonder if you can see it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I'm just mixing it up. I've got some phthalo blue here and I'm putting a little bit in here and I'm mixing it with water. For those who are completely brand new um, to watercolor, um, you want to take the pigment and dot it. So I'm going to take, pick up a little pigment and I'm just putting it down here and then I mix it in. So I make sure that none of the pigment particles are just sticking around either on my brush or um, in the mixture I've created uh, because you want it to be nice and smooth. So you get an even wash, um, yeah? And also to test how much paint, uh, what's the ratio between paint and uh, pigment, I'm gonna test a piece here, like just put it out here. Do I really like it that blue? I'm not sure, I'm looking at it and I'm going to add, let's see. A little more water. All right. That's, well, that's... Do that, can I interrupt you with a question from the chat? Yes. Um, do you tape your paper down? And if, if you don't, why not? Okay. Um, so when you do um, watercolors where I'm doing serious, like wet on wet, or I'm getting really heavy with my colors, I might not even tape it at all. Instead, I might wet or dip the entire sheet in water and mount it on something like this. Um, you can't see it quite yet. This is not really set up to be the perfect watercolor lesson, but more like a tester. But you see this black corrugated plastic right underneath? That's the stuff that's keeping my, um, that I normally paint on, that I would put the sheet of paper on wet on wet completely. Then it would not buckle. It would be flat as a board while I paint. And that's a whole set of techniques in there, yeah? So that's something I can definitely show you in class. Um, right now, I'm just taping this on the edges so I have a nice effect when I take off the tape. When I'm done painting, it'll have a nice white border. That's all. That's the only reason I'm doing it. You don't have to at all. Um, and I'm not wetting the sheet today. It's 
like one hour is a very limited amount of time. And when I'm not really able to interact with all of you, I wouldn't know if everybody's, um, um, sorry, I'm just checking the chat box if there's any chat. I don't see them, but okay. Um, Melissa, I can't see any other questions. Is that okay? Like, I guess. Yeah, um, I, yeah. Someone else said that they can't find the picture. So I will drop it in the chat for everybody. You can click the link. <gasps> Awesome. That would be so great. Okay. Thank you. you okay. Um, yeah. So keep dropping those questions in. Melissa will alert me um, and in case I miss it. Um, what else I wanted to say? Oh yeah. Colors. So going back to colors, if you see the photograph, do you see that the lightest value is this bright lemony yellow? All right. And a quick trick. And please do understand that this whole hour is, um, uh, going to be hard to go between like basic and advanced and you know all of that so I'm just trying to keep some amount of info coming out um, I'll try and give you a good experience um, when you see this hopefully you'll get a lot out of it but if you have some questions that are very specific please put it in the chat box so I can cover it if I can and if I don't email me and maybe maybe you'll join a class and maybe we'll talk about it in person if you look at the lemon yellow bits for that you squint your eye yeah you do this you just squint and if you squint at that picture, I hope all of you can immediately see that the lights and the darks are brighter now. They're clearer. And um, it makes it easier to quickly assess that, oh, yes, I see all that lemon yellow in the background. Um, the way I'm going to be painting this is I want to focus on just a few of the leaves um, for them to be uh, perfectly shaped and defined. And some of them will not be uh, defined. They will be loose. So it will be interconnected shapes that kind of look like leaves, but I'm not going to paint every single one of them, okay? So my whole style of painting, and maybe you saw the images that were, um, I think one of the images was up, a fish uh, image that you might have all seen. Um, my way of painting is different from, you know, like every, every watercolorist has their own style. So in my case, the way I paint is I have recognizable imagery, but at the same time, it could be very loose and wild and um, not exact to the photograph. But I always take inspiration from landscapes. I paint outdoors a lot. So this was a photo I took, um, I think, last year, last autumn. Yeah. All right. I'm going to get into it. I want to get into the blue sky, like I was saying. So going to start that. I'm just mixing up my blue. And now what I'm going to do is as I squint at this photograph, okay, I hope everybody can see this. I'm going to go, I see my branches here and I know that there's a patch of blue sky visible here. Okay, so I'm just kind of dabbing and painting. And as you can see, I'm leaving the shape of the blue really sort of not perfect or anything, just sort of, you know, sort of clear, but sort of not. I hope that makes sense. Um, the reason the shapes are like this is because if you squint again, you'll see that those leaves are creating the strangest negative shapes. And it's so pretty. Um, like you don't really know what you're looking at. If you look just at the blue, they look like these beautiful abstract shapes. Now, I want to definitely get some of them um, down before I continue. All right, let's see. Oh, and there's some right by the branch. So if that's the case, go over the branch. So if you see this here, I'm going to bring this up for a second. If you can see the pencil line and you can see the blue on top, that's because the blue is light enough that if I put the very dark brown on top, um, it'll show through, right? So there's no need to fret there. And I can just create this blue willy nilly. The only thing that's going to happen is it can't go over a yellow spot because the yellow will not be able to come back on top of the blue, which is why you. And another little trick. So let's say I put down some blue right here. OK. All right. I'm just putting this in. And as you can see, the blue is not like a real ombre or anything. It's like pretty much the same value. So all throughout from the top of the picture to the bottom. So let's say I put some blue here and let's say you got a bit too much of liquid. Okay. I hope you guys can see that. If there's too much liquid, you want to just take your clean brush and just suck it up. Let your brush act like a straw. 
and you pick it up. Yeah. Um, let's see. What else? Oh, right here. So there's this lovely little spot here. Now, as you can see, the blue is drying rapidly. I haven't done a wet on wet or anything. It's drying. It's getting ready for me to put in um, the yellows, which is perfect. I'm going to work rapidly now for a few minutes and try and capture as much of the blues that I can think of uh, or, or observe. Some I'm just making it up as I go along, but some I want to be absolutely sure I get those shapes. And some of them connect like this, which is always nice to notice. And if you're able to create a negative shape that resembles a leaf, go for you. <laughs> so I'll, I'll try a couple here. I will pretend like these are leaf shapes. Here you go. Yeah, so that's negative, negative blue right there. And let's see. And then it gets pretty dense. Then I don't see blue everywhere, which is nice. It's a lovely compositional element, too, that you have this strong branch coming through. Um, okay, there we go. Oh, and some here. There's little, little tiny bits of blue. This lovely long round pointed brush gives me so much, like I can control it so beautifully. I'm so happy with this brush. Um, it gives me a nice flexible point, but at the same time, it carries a lot of color and I can create some very fine lines, which is always awesome. Okay, let's see. Oh, and some blue up here, which is kind of nice to always see blue sky up there is always a good thing. Um, but the shape, so the shape of the blue um, is going to make a lot of difference later. So you want to pay some attention to the way those shapes are being made. You don't want them to be round and blobby because as you can see, those leaves are pretty pointy. And so you want to get some sharp angles to your blue. And let's see. I feel like the blue is in this kind of a pattern. If you can see that, it's sort of this way. Um, it's not so much to the top left because that area is more dense, maybe. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try and capture a few more. We are at 720. No way. Okay. So let's get a few more lines here and then some down here because it's me looking up at this lovely tree. So um, just got a few more, maybe here and here. All right. Let's, I'm going to call that a stop on the blue. But if you need to put in some blue later, you can. The other thing with um, watercolor I find um, consistently, I'm going to switch out my water. I'm taking on a fresh um, jar because I need uh, clean water for my yellow. Um, if you have a small palette and you need more space, please don't do the yellow near the blue. You're going to find that very quickly they will leak or touch each other and then you have green. And you don't want any green in this picture. Um, this was like a pure yellow tree, maple tree. All right. I think Melissa's put in all the pictures, which is awesome. Um, ooh. Uh, excuse me. And okay. I'm very sorry about that. I hope it's still clear. Okay. I'm going to go in with a lemon yellow, guys. So clean water, some lovely lemon yellow. Um, in this case, I'm using some bismuth but you can use lemon yellow and this will create our first lightest wash, okay? It's the first wash and it's the lightest. So it's like this, this bright, yeah? Isn't that beautiful? I love this yellow, All right? And I'm not worried about the browns uh, because the, the stem is gonna be... Oh, um, somebody says that there's no picture, but at least the chat is now working. Um, Hi, and they uh, don't there's two hit. screenshots posted above. I'll post them again. Um, I, and the chat is now uh, available. So I will update it there. And it's also in your emails from Eventbrite from earlier today. Um, but I'll post, I'll post it here. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Melissa. All right. Now, when I put the yellow, I could go over things because I can come back in, right? It's a light color. So when you're doing yellow, you can just come back in um, on top, I mean, and glaze. If you have to overlap anything, it's fine. So 
I'm just gonna go willy nilly, um, create some lovely shapes. Um, as you can see, there's yellow almost everywhere. So it's, I'm mixing in a little bit of quinacridone gold now, trying to get some, let's see. Here, so you can see what I mean. Uh, I'm leaking the colors, I'm letting them bleed into one another. And it won't matter because eventually I will create some leaves that are very, very um, stark and clear. Uh, you know, not too dark because this tree doesn't call it a uh, call for that. But um, you'll get that. Okay, there's a huge, lovely amount of lemon yellow golden leaves peeking through here, and so I need this in the background so I can get in. I touched the blue and it bled a little bit, but again, not to worry if that happens. All right, again, getting some lovely yellows. And as you can see, if I touch the blue, it does bleed, but we're gonna work around that. And because we're doing a quick and sort of like a quick painting, it's not really a very detailed one, uh, it won't matter. The other way to do this would have been to mask it. You would have masked the sky and come back in. Um, that's another way to you know, make sure. Um, now, some of this lemon yellow needs to go really close to the edges of the blue. So make sure that if it's completely dry, you should have no issues. It's only where things are a little wet that you may have issues. So let's just get some of this done. There you go. All right. I'm going to get a bit of lemon yellow here. But I'm also bringing in some quinacridone. And when I bring the quinacridone, which is this sort of golden brown. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm leaving bits of white everywhere. And one of the reasons is I often tell my students to um, leave white when in doubt. Like and if you're if you're wondering what to do um, when in doubt, just leave white. It's all right. Uh, it actually gives some lovely extra space for us to play. I mixed in some of the blue, guys. Um, I love keeping the harmony of colors uh, intact. So for this painting, if I'm using just the um, phthalo blue, and a couple of yellows, I don't switch out to make a darker color by adding green or something else. I just use the feel of blue and it harmonizes your painting. Yeah. Well, that's what I find most of the time that works. Yeah. All right. And I'm leaving bits of white. So that means I can go in with um, uh, the sky color again. All right. So now I'm going to go in. Aha. I'm going to turn this painting a bit because I can actually see it better this way. Um, going in with another slightly deeper color over here because right over here in the in the corners and while everything is nice and wet I would like to maybe also create some pointy shapes but sort of leak it in now as you can see some parts are already drying and it's so pretty to go in and add some of those marks Let's say, oh, and I can bring in some green brown, which is just a mix of that phthalo blue. And I'm going to squint again at my drawing, uh, at my photo, and I see th this color coming out. Okay, guys. So if anybody has a question about this color, please let me know. All right. Um, some beautiful quinacridone gold some warm yellow, not just the lemony ones. And now when I go on top, I want to give you guys some sense uh, before it turns eight and it's too late. <laughs> um, so let me get some more color in. And now I'm going to switch to my mop, which is this guy over here. And that's just because I want to cover more surface area quickly. I'm squinting and I realize that most of this I can do in these kinds of shapes because I don't have to do every little piece. So by doing this, I'm saving myself some time. Uh, you guys can take your time. You'll do not have to rush the way I am. Um, and I'm going to now bring in some green browns here. Ah, and now I'm gonna leak in some more color here, some across this. And as you can see, there's this lovely, if you look at the photo and squint, parts of it are really lemony. And then there's parts of it that are really intense, shadowy yellows. 
And the shadow yellows need this color mixed with a little bit of the green. And if you're leaking one color into the next, you get this beautiful glazing and bleeding, if you guys can see that. I think a lot of it has to do with the coloring as well. Uh, sorry, the light effect. I hope you all can see it. All right, let's get into this. And you know it's going to get really dramatic when we get that um, brown stem on. So that's going to be, uh, not just the stem, sorry, the branch. All right, I'm going to get a little bit quinacridone gold in here mixed with some of the cerulean, uh, sorry, the uh, phthalo. And I'm going to do this. And I'm leaving some whites because I feel like there's some blue sky so peeking through that I don't think I got all of it. Um, these maple leaves need some definition. And I'm using the brush inventively. I hope you can see that, uh, which is I'm holding it right on top and sort of shaping the leaves a little bit like this. And let's see, what else can I show? Oh, okay, I can show you one right here. And we can pretend like this one sort of is really close to us. Um, and then I'm gonna go in with some bismuth again. And this time with the bismuth, I am gonna go in here and add some lemony washes, um, some shapes. So now the other thing with leaves is that, you know how with um, fall coloring, you could create a variety of marks and it will still look like it's fall because we, we associate, it's like most of painting is just illusions, right? You're creating this illusion of something. So if you added just a tiny like branch somewhere, you immediately read it as a tree. You don't have to do much um, to prove that it's a tree. Um, I'm mixing in some of that um, raw umber that I had um, because one or two of these leaves here seem to have like this really strong, dark, coloring. Uh, let's see this one. There's one over here. That's I'm going to do this. Now I'll get better shapes if I use the smaller uh, brush, the long round that I was using, but I want to get some of these more interesting marks that I otherwise would not be able to get. So that's why I am Continuing to use this. Now I'm going to get in some greens here. It's not really a green, but sort of a brown green. And want to get some of that. Let's see. Maybe that's a bit too much. So if something feels like too much, um, you can always go in and lift by pressing down with the paper towel and you lifted it. Okay. Because it was still wet, I was able to do that. Um, I'm now going to wash out my mop, take my long round pointed, and just another tip, try not to keep your brushes in the water um, sitting in that. Just wash your brush and lay it down flat on the side, maybe on a paper towel or uh, some napkins, because that way you protect the edge, uh, sorry, the uh, tip of your brush, because the tip is the most precious part. It really gives a you know, shape to your um, strokes and you want that to be nice and um, uh, reliable. Okay, uh, let's see. Mm, I'd like to see if I want to punch up some of this. Let's see. Okay. So the webinar style thing is a little awkward for me because I'm not actually seeing anybody's faces. Um, so, you know, it's a bit strange to keep talking to myself, sort of. <laughs> I know you're all out there, but it's a little strange. Um, so it feels a little disconnected and feels a bit like I'm not, you know, really aware of anybody and I'm just talking and I, but I'm hoping, um, Um, let's see, I'm hoping that we get more questions, more responses. All right, 
you can see I'm also adding in the blue. I want to give you guys all of these experiences so that when you uh, continue the painting on your own today or tomorrow or whatever, um, you can see that you can do that. You can add back some of the blue. So I love. I just love this. <laughs> Feels good. All right, I'm going to time myself. It's 7.30, we're halfway through and we're getting there, but I still have to fill up some of these holes. That's a lot of yellow. So I'll fill up a few more and then by 7.40, I really should start the branch. Yeah, so let's go. Um, I'm going to make some lovely golden marks here. Um, one across the branch is always nice. Uh, and like I said, the branch doesn't mind, doesn't matter because it's dark and can come right on top. Now, why am I not just painting the whole thing yellow, right? And just get on with it and then put the strokes. Because you leave the bits of white, you leave bits of yellow, and you get more bang for your buck, basically. You get, um, uh, like, look at this. Like, I'll show you something that's so, so wonderful. So let's say we have a lemony yellow patch. And we do, right? We have a lemony yellow patch here, and I want some additional uh, leaves here, right? All I have to do is just glaze on top, even with the lightest of colors, and it gets such an interesting variation that you want to believe that, oh yeah, look at all those leaves, you know? So you start to enjoy it more. So you leave whites, you leave paler washes, and then you have space and time to fill in some darker washes. It really adds up and gives you um, more opportunity, all right? Now onto this area, I'm just gonna fill up some of these really rapidly. I would like some of this um, yellow to really touch the blue, uh, but also I don't wanna lose the blues and make them completely green because it will just glaze. If you go over the blue with the yellow, it, it could glaze. And if it's glazed, you're not gonna really get um, a nice fresh uh, sky blue, which would be a waste then, right? It'd be sad. All right, so I want to get some lemon yellow in here, some in there. All right, and more color in here. All right, so this area, I'm just going to kind of go over with a wash of lemon yellow. All right. I hope people are enjoying the image. Um, I know the coloring is hard to see on the camera, at least it is for me. Um, I'm really hoping that when you see the image again, when we email out the final painting to everybody, um, you'll get to see the actual color. I, I don't put filters on my paintings. I don't do any of that. So what you'll be seeing in that final image will be the way it looks. Yeah, I'll do it as best as I can with my phone. Okay, um, I want to, you see this awkward shape here, guys, this shape, not so good. Looks like a man floating in the leaves. Um, I want to get a nicer shape there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some darker yellow uh, with my quinacridone and a little bit of um, maybe even the bit of the bandai brown. Uh, sorry, the raw umber, not bandai. And just that is going to let me create, and it's dry enough that I could create the the shape of a couple of leaves so that it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's one leaf there. You'll notice that if you leave um, um, a little to the imagination, you get more for it. You know, it's sort of prettier. It's it, Don't define everything too perfectly and you'll end up having more fun abstracting and uh, people will have a lot, a lot of fun figuring out what it is. Um, I want to show you now this lovely technique of just drawing a couple of stems. So let's say I'm drawing a really all orange leaf here. And I go in with, okay, so let's do it for this one. I wonder if you can see that, but there's a stem being drawn in there. I won't do that for every leaf. That would drive me nuts, but I will um, do it for um, some of them. And when you do that, you get this um, sort of focus. You know, it brings things into focus. Your eye tends to go to the line and it's defining it and it's tricking your brain like everything in art that that's a leaf, that's a leaf, you know, so it's good. <laughs> uh, you can do a lot of these kinds of tricks um, and get a lot of lovely detail 
uh, without actually painting every single. So I'm going to put in some shapes um, and now I'm getting some more quinacridone. I'm going to create, oh, you know something? I have to put in a couple of these dark shapes. I promised you that I would do this thing. So let me just, let me try and get you one or two of these, please, because it is kind of important. All right, so the way that works is you put down, uh, you don't take too much um, paint. Uh, sorry, you don't take too much water. You have more paint on your brush. And now I'm creating what hopefully will read like to your brains as an autumn maple leaf. And I'm using the sharp lines to create that shape. Yeah. Um, I also have a couple coming in here. Let's see if I can pull that off. A couple of the leaves, if I put in the blue, um, you get this beautiful green and I can put in one or two leaves here so that it looks like we have, yeah, there we go. Another leaf over there. Lots of little shapes all building up to make you feel like you're looking at uh, a maple tree. And let's see. Oh, and this shape that was bothering me, I'm going to now divide this shape by adding these other leaves in here. Um, all right. And some here, because now we want some darks right here so that it really looks powerful. And we can get some silhouettes because uh, the sun is shining through from the other side. So you want some really strong, dark colored leaves, which hopefully, I'm creating enough of a, all right, I'll have to paint some more of these perfectly shaped leaves, not too many, but just enough to hint again that these are uh, maple leaves. All right, before everybody, um, it's 7.37. So I just want you to, if you've been painting along, just time yourself a little bit and get ready for um, doing the dark branches. Um, and in my case, it, once the dark branches are done, it's trickier to come back in and correct anything. But that's okay. It's like, it's not a. All right, let's see. I'm purposely not shaping these leaves perfectly. I don't want that kind of perfection coming in. I do want some, some lines. And we'll just leave some of those lines like this. All right. Um, what else? I want a bit more of a strong color right here in the in this section here. So I'm just gonna add that and get in some green browns. So it's like sort of creating my my shape of the leaves. Um, I'm hoping, like you know, I do understand that unless you've observed enough leaves, you can't quite make these shapes as quickly. Uh, but I assure you, I have not painted as many maple leaves as most watercolors have because I'm, you know, always painting them more at a distance. Uh, but hopefully, this gives you some of a, you know, a bit of an idea that just by creating or suggesting the shape, you can um, get people to believe that it's, yeah, there we go. I'm kind of mixed up some of those colors there. Anywhere that the leaf shapes start to look awkward, just kind of go in. And that might take a little while uh, because you can't quickly assess these things while painting and I'm painting far too rapidly. Um, my students know, sometimes my uh, demos um, happen over a period of like three hours slowly. 
So they go back, they do a little bit, and then we come back to the main table and then I show them what I'm doing. So that's sort of how it goes. Um, let's see if I can get a couple more greens in just a bit. I'm doing this with a bit of a watered green, not too much. Um, there's a concept that I often talk about, which um, I love uh, how easy it becomes to understand this. Um, we talk about tea, milk, and honey. So like in a mug of tea, um, the largest quantity is usually water. And then you have uh, a little bit of milk and then an even smaller amount of honey. Um, so in a similar way, you go in with tea washes. And once you're done with the tea washes, then you put in the milk and then you put in the honey. And the honey is where we're going right now, which is I'm going to switch out to that deep, deep raw umber. I'm going to mix it up with some of that lovely um, phyllo. Uh, let's see, what's that brown? Yeah, oops. Oh, no. Where am I wrong? Oh, there it is. All right. So I want it to be really dark. Now, I had kept some Payne's gray out because I don't think all the branches are going to be perfectly dark with just that. I need, like, something really dark coming in. So I'm using a little bit of Payne's gray. And... Um, and the um, mix of the brown also. So you get like, uh, Payne's Gray has a blue cast to it. So you get this, which I'm gonna show you now in a second. It also can be very brown and you can add in um, some of the yellow if you feel like or whatever. I'm adding in a little bit of um, dark orange as a quick fix for me to get this going. Now you can see I really started out strong with this branch. But just be careful because the, the shape, the negative shape is really important. Without the negative shape, which means the, the parts where the leaves come and you know they kind of block the branch, you really have to account for that. You can't just go willy-nilly because you want it to look like it's tucked away between these lovely leaves. And so you want you know some of that. So I hope you all can see that that branch is slowly forming, um, you know, and I'm making sure it's a little painful, but it's worth it because it looks so pretty when it's done. Um, you get to put the, um, you get to put the brown, yeah, sorry, my dog is a little old and wants to be near me, but also tends to bark at anybody who shows up in the house. Okay, so um, I'm trying to follow my own pencil lines. Now, remember, I go across the blue because the blue is the sky, <laughs> in case we all forgot. Um, and I'm gonna go through a little bit like this and just sort of let it sit somewhere here, yeah? Uh, I hope you all can see that. All right, next is I'm gonna bring in some of that Payne's Gray and I wanted to very much bring in some really rough, dark sort of, as though there's a there's a thicker tree somewhere tucked away in here. Um, I thought that might make it interesting a little bit. Um, all right, uh, what else? Oh, and now let's get some of these lines in. Um, as you can see, there's this lovely, This lovely tendril. Now, again, I'm using the point of my brush and not getting as much of a point, but I'm going to use another one that has a sharper point. Um, branches tend to get thinner as they go out, so just be mindful of that. And if you need to break up the branches, do that. It always adds a sense of natural... Um, the, 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 that's how it would be, right? Uh, they, they are not going to be these perfect. Um, so here I've got this coming through. Um, I've got one stick over here going across the blue sky. I like the idea of having some of these branches going across the blue sky. So it really does look like it's, you know, uh, being that you're looking up at the tree. Now let's do this one major branch here together. Um, so it comes out from this one. So I got to make this one just a little thicker. And then it kind of 
cuts across this very awkward curve and then sweeps upward, goes across this sky bit. And then when it comes up here, it gets really thin and sort of goes out and branches out. Um, and then we have this lovely branch coming there, which I'm going to put in fairly strong. And then, oh, a little bit of bleed happening there. That's okay. There's ways to fix that or leave it and play with it. Okay. All right, just ways to play with those leaves. I hope people can see that. Um, oh, and there's another lovely branch that can't, comes out here, sort of. Um, so I'll just put that in. And as you can see, there's so much that you could do with this painting. Like if you really got into this, you can do this. I've done this um, a few times and mostly for my mom who lives in India and just absolutely adores the fall uh, colors. And so, yeah. Right, and then this branch has a couple of shoots that are coming out at intervals. So let's just make that so it looks like it's... There we go. I think that's almost complete. Um, it's 7.46. If anybody has questions, this is a good time. I'm feeling um, more able, in fact, to answer questions. It's a good time for that. Hey, Mom, um, I'm here with everybody now. We have a question uh, um, from mm -hmm. someone in the chat here asking if this will be recorded. It will. Um, ah. <laughs> it, is, it is being recorded, and it will be yeah. available on our YouTube channel but everybody that's registered tonight will get the link in their email address uh, tomorrow. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's, um, I'm so excited for that because um, I had a couple of students who couldn't make it tonight and it's so nice that you can do that for us, Melissa. Um, I'm gonna get this going. Um, okay, I feel like adding in a bit of blue. Okay, guys, so, um, I just have to create a nice little well of blue. Check that I have the right consistency. So the ratio of paint, pigment, and water in your brush makes or breaks uh, watercolor in so many ways. And I know that's not even, e like it's very difficult to talk about like this unless I had like awesome camera work happening. Um, where I had another camera showing everything, you know. Um, so I can't quite show you that, but I can show you a close here if you'd like. Um, that the consistency of paint here, I'll show it right up here, is this consistency. I know it's hard to see, but if you can make out. There's not too much water. It's not going to pool. So if you put a pool of water, you'll find that the pigments um, eventually settles towards the outer edges where the water pushes it out. And it kind of dries all funky, which is also fun, but not for this. And so in this case, my pigment to water ratio is, um, I, I'm not going to be able to put a number to it, but it's just enough that when I lay down a wash here, look, I lay down a wash, it's flat, right? And that bead even, you can just pick up the bead. See? So... It's a good way, like a lot of the uh, watercolor classes have to do like, you have to do like exercises. And it's only by doing those exercises or like we did today, which was some fish. If you guys follow me on Instagram, or if you're on Instagram, it'll be fun. Um, I'm going to try and update things elsewhere too. But for now, Instagram is where I show most of my work. Um, you can see what we did today. We did fish in class. That was fun. Um, and when we were doing the fish, we were talking about how next class is going to be all about um, exercises, like watercolor exercises, so we can really know what it means to have a wash with uh, milk consistency, honey consistency, etc. Let me just quickly show you that. A lot of people, I'm sure, are interested in knowing what the hell that means. <laughs> um, here, so I'll show you. If you do a tea consistency, it's like this. And then if you do a milk consistency, 
it's more like this. And then honey is like almost, almost, not quite, but almost, almost pure pigment. Something like that. I know it's a bit strong of a differentiation that there's lots of shades in between, but tea, milk, honey. Um, this kind of becomes an easy way to tell students, like, let's just go with the tea washes for now, not too much more, and then bleed in some of the milk, like I did. Excuse my dog. I'm so sorry. Um, somebody at home will take care of her in a minute. Okay. Um, while you're paused here, can we ask you, um, Stacy is wondering if you could talk about your brush shapes and how you decide how you're going to maybe use the side of one or the tip of the other. Yeah, that's a great, great point. Um, since I never got to do what I thought I was going to do, which was this entire thing, uh, that's okay. We'll, we'll just have to have more of these sessions. So if you use the brush at, an, at a side, at the angle, like, you know, sideways, you get this stroke. If you do it this way with this brush, that's how it works with this brush. You get lovely thin lines. Um, I'll, I'll just show you all the different things and then we can talk about. And then if I wanted to really like get, um, you know, like a circular action going, or I want to do like a little bit of scumbling, um, or I want to uh, do a dry, um, so like, like this, which is a dry brush technique. And then in the dry brush technique, you can do sweeping action, you can do, like futzing around so that you can get lots of little textural marks. Um, there's so many different ways to do it. Now, how do I decide? Well, that's a great question. It depends. So if you study leads a little bit, uh, you'll start to see that they have a particular angle to them. Um, so if you uh, studied one of these uh, leads, I'm just going to try and draw it here on the side for you. Oops. Okay. Um, so you have a center point, which is something that we identify when you draw your leaves and then you have these right generally these autumn maple leaves look i mean sorry all the maple leaves look something like this so it's got all this um lovely strokes right so i'm trying to emulate that so i'm not making it very specific but i am trying so when this dries a little which i'm not going to get an opportunity today to show you that uh, but I will adjust that. I'll make a couple of leaves before I share the um, final image. Uh, I, I move my brush to emulate that feeling. So with the branches, I was a bit more specific, a bit more defined, you know, a bit more using my, um, uh, like so. So for example, in this case, like let's say I'm doing a stem right here. I would add a little nodule there because sometimes branches do that. Like they have a tiny nodule or something. So I would, I would press the brush down a bit. Then I would move it a bit. So if you play with that, it's really kind of fun. It's, it's this beautiful, like, look at these lines, you know? And you can play with this and you can create sweeping gestures. You can create dots and dashes. Um, you can create um, thin lines like this. Um, so many different things. And um, deciding which one to use, yeah. That's part of studying the subject matter. In this case, the leaf. And then saying, all right, which of these leaves, uh, sorry, which um, shapes best um, say maple leaf? And I don't think mine is completely um, accurate maple leaf just yet, but it will be when I'm done. So um, I will be working on this and sending you an updated image soon. And I might even use a fine brush to create that shape. So let's see. This is a very fast one. This is not perfect, but you get that feeling with this one that it's a maple leaf. Um, and that's the way to, you know, the other thing to do is to use the line. So let's say I'm not getting it, I'm finding it hard. Use the brush like you would a pencil. So let me draw one here, All right? This one I'm going to do at an angle. So uh, give me a moment to be silent so I can study this leaf. <laughs> It's a bit hard to talk and paint this at the same time. Uh, okay, and then um, All right, and then let's see if I can get the
Yeah. I know it's not the best right now, and it's probably because I'm also not um, uh, able to find a completely dry spot, but there you have it. Yeah, you get that sense of um, what a fall uh, maple leaf might look like. I'm gonna try one more over here, and let's get Think got a bit too green, but we'll oh, sorry, a bit too orange. And let's see if we can. I'm gonna curve it a little bit. And if you curve it, you get that. Yeah, there we go. And hopefully that kind of gives you another kind of way to paint it. Um, is that helpful? Um, can you review some of the brushes and the ways you make? Okay, review some of the brushes. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't review brushes. Um, I know it's a, it's a short class to do that. Um, I've only reviewed one really because I've only been working with one. Um, and the mop I did, I showed you some of the strokes of the mop. Uh, you can use a flat brush. There's so many brushes to work with. Another brush that I absolutely love is an Asian brush. Um, I often use this to create like um, rough edges, um, like, like so. Like you could, you can imagine like this creating a pine tree, you know? If you guys can see that, yeah. There you go. Yeah, that kind of thing. So lots of brush stroke um, options. Um, I know it's almost eight o'clock and I hope this um, helped. <laughs> um, are there any other questions that I may not have responded to? Hema, we're getting um, a lot of just thank yous in our private chat. Thank you so much for doing this. Oh, um, yeah, you're so welcome. We're so appreciative that you uh, spend some time with us on a Tuesday night. So just for another general uh, FYI, the recording to this class will be posted in the Arts Council's uh, YouTube channel, but we will send a direct email to everybody that registered tonight, along with the reference photos. Again, just in case anybody uh, was still unable to find them, we'll make it as easy and simple as possible for November. Um, so everybody can just relax and enjoy painting. Yeah, that's great. And uh, yes, and we'll uh, when we send this image out, we'll send the photos again. So you know, in case for any reason anybody didn't not get it, we'll make sure you have it. Um, you're very welcome, everybody. I'm so glad you all joined in. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully, painting along. And if you did paint, maybe you post it somewhere and tag me on Instagram if you can. Um, maybe I'll send that link to along with this painting. I am going to tweak it. So just to let you know, I'll probably write it in the email, but I will um, sharpen up, crisp up some of the leaves uh, because there's a lot of blurry action because it's wet. Um, hair dryers are good too, <laughs> but one hour is the point. That's the, the bigger crunch there. Um, thank you again, everybody for joining in. Uh, thanks, Melissa, for helping and taking care of everything in the back because I couldn't. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think we should stop at this point, yeah. All right, that's a wrap, everybody. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. One more big thank you to Hema, and we will see you in November. Mm -hmm. We'll include the reminder of the date and how to register for that one as well in our follow-up email. So until then, have a wonderful evening, everybody, and we will see you then. Awesome. Take Bye -bye. care, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Melissa.